All right. Good morning. Hola. 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 You. Pay attention. All right. So we're going to do some math today, especially for those people that are not here. Uh, <clears throat> approximating integrals, the trapezoid rule, trapezoid sum, Simpson's rule. All right. <clears throat> it's almost the same as Riemann sum. But what do you think the difference between Riemann sum and trapezoid rule is? Trapezoid. Yeah, the trapezoid, the shape, right? So instead of actually doing little rectangles from a left and right hand side, we're going to do a trapezoid, which is uh, a better approximate. What? Oh, man, the struggle is real. Okay, see all this right here? Blah, 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 math, 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 blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, okay, here it is. Blah, 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 blah. Um, okay, delta x is super important, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so same thing. So we're going to figure out delta x. And so we're going to get to a point where we're going to make a formula for this. So I'm going to end up doing this, but before I do that, I am going to make a formula. And if you make a formula, it is going to be that much better than actually having to just follow some random formula that they give you. I'm going to teach you guys how to make a formula. Same thing for everything. If you make your own formula, it, it really doesn't matter. You have to just understand where everything comes from and where does it go. So where does it come from? Where does it go? Cotton Eye Joe. There we go. All right. All right. So let's let's take a look. So a trapezoid. So I'm going to take trapezoid. I bet it is. <clears throat> All right. So what we're modeling today. Okay, let's see what we're modeling today. Uh, anyway, so my area of a trapezoid is one half H B one plus B two. So that's a trapezoid. That is a trapezoid. That is the area of a trapezoid. Now we're going to try and make that apply to this. So if I were to have a trapezoid, I would go like this. I'd be like, all right, uh, basic, super basic trapezoid. And this is parallel to that. This is going to be my 90 degree angle. So this is my H, this is my B1, this is my B2. So that right there is a basic trapezoid. Now we're going to try and make it apply to what we're doing. teach you guys how to make this and it's gonna make so much more sense because you're always I I could never even remember the formula for this because it's kind of that anyway huh where are the notes uh, what'd you guys do with the notes there was a pile there I don't know where they went Oh, dang it. Okay. Uh, wish you would have told me that before I started my video. Anyway, um, I'll go get more because I don't even know where they ended up at. Okay. So I did pr pick them up and you know, the copier had a malfunction, so it might have not printed them all. Are they on that side? No, that's a uh, chess notation. <clears throat> so do you guys need some blank paper to actually draw this out? Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Anyway, 
So I'm gonna make this work. So this is gonna be my trapezoid right here, 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 and here. So in this case, my trapezoid is in this direction. There's my right angle. Here's my P1. And there's my H. <clears throat> so let's look at this trapezoid and see what is actually going to happen here. So for what I'm doing, my H would actually represent what? The width. And what do we call the width? The what? There's my delta X, right? So the width is going to be my delta X. So my H is the same as delta X. Okay. And what do you think the B1 and B2 represent? The y values for yeah from my function right but in this case it's from my left side and right side isn't it so in this case right here it would be f of 1 right so b1 would be the same as saying f of 1 okay and b2 is f of 2 whatever that is right So let, let's go through and actually write out the whole thing. So I know my formula always starts off with one half, right? Because that's what I wrote down earlier. So let's start with that. So my area for this would be equal to one half. Now H, in this case, my H is delta X, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to have a delta X here. So it's going to be H, is it going to be the same all the way across? Yeah, okay, it's going to be, but let's see. So let's take a look at my first one. So I'm taking out a one half because every single one of these trapezoids has a one half, right? So let's take a look. I, I know, I see those eyes just like going straight down. You're like, ah. Okay, so I'm going to have my delta X. There we go. And now I have a delta X here, so for this first one. So what would I do to figure out my B1? Plug in zero. Plug in zero. So that would be F of zero, right? Plus F of one, right? So this is going to be my first little area here, isn't it? Yeah? Okay, good. Now let's, what about the second one? Because we're going to add the next one to it. So I'm adding, so the area for the next one's going to be, okay, you always got to start with this, right? So it's my delta x, because I took out my one half, because every single one of these is going to have a one half. So it's going to be a delta x again, and my b1 plus b2. So that's going to be, there we go. So f of 1 plus f of 2, right? Mm -hmm. All right, and for the sake of this, um, you know what, let me erase some of this. Because I don't want to do this much. So I'll go this far. There we go. Because we're just making the formula right now to actually make it easier. And so let's see. All right. My next one is going to be delta x. So it's plus delta x. And it's going to be f of 2.
Here we go. So now I have everything written out because I don't like doing this one with actually having real numbers because if you have real numbers you're going to want to use one for your delta x all the time because you know, it's not always going to be one. Though. All right, let's see. We're going to algebra the crap out of this. Do they all have a delta x? Yes. So that's a common factor. So what am I going to do with that? Pull it out. Pull it out. So it's going to be a is equal to one half delta x, right? That's all out. Now, look at all my numbers here. f of 0, f of 1, f of 1, f of 2, f of 2, f of 3. Uh-huh, yeah, I got two f of 1s and two f of 2s, right? I do. Okay, so I know I could take whatever that value is and multiply by 2, right? So it's, I don't actually have to do it two times. I only have to do it once, right? I just know I have two of them. Okay, so how about this? But I only have one of this, right? I only have one f of 0, don't I? And I only have one f of 3, right? So since I know I only have one of each of those, I, I'm going to pull out those first. Okay, so I have the left side and I have the right side. So I have an f of 0 plus f of the right side. The far right is f of 3 because I only have one of each of those. Yeah? But I have two of these other ones. So it's two times f of one plus f of two. So what I just did there by algebraing the crap out of this is that's the actual formula. But if you don't remember the formula, which 90% of the time that's where the problem is, what could I do instead? Make your, own formula. Make your own formula or just go through and find the area of each one individually. So you know how to find the area of a single trapezoid. Just do it multiple times. Okay. So that's the most basic thing you could do because remembering formula messes you up. Because when I ask for the distance formula, most people don't remember it. No. And so I, I don't even remember the distance formula myself because I make it every time and just all it is is Pythagorean theorem. All the time it's Pythagorean theorem. It is. Trust me. The actual? Actual Pythagorean theorem, yes. That's where the distance formula comes from, huh? Okay, so we want to find the distance in between two points. So call this one right here. This is going to be x2, comma, y2. All right? And this one right here is going to be x1, comma, y1. Okay, whatever it is. Ah, you know what? No, let's, let's make the point down here, so that's going to make it even better. There we go. So that's going to go right there. So just for the sake of, there we go. Ah. Okay, so Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So what we're going to do is in Pythagorean theorem, I want to know the distance from here to here, right? So how would I find the distance from here to here? So in my Pythagorean theorem, which is going to be x squared plus y squared equals, uh, this one's d squared. Yeah, because it's distance. It is c, though. Anyway, all right. So from here to here, I'm going to make a right triangle out of this. 
So I do x2 minus x1. Okay? So that's going to give me the delta x. That's going to be the change from this one to this one. Squared. All right, what about the y's? Up and down, right? Up and down, so it's plus. Now from here to here, it would be the change from here to here. So it's y2 minus y1. So that's my delta y. Squared, and that's equal to my distance squared. There's my Pythagorean theorem, but Mathematically, we know distance is always positive. positive. So when I undo my square, I'm going to square root both sides, right? So I'm going to get that plus or minus square root of x squared, oh, I'm sorry, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared is equal to my d. But again, distance is always going to be positive, so I get rid of this one. There we go. That's the actual distance formula by giving the Pythagorean theorem. Wow. Yeah, just plugging in points. So anyway, so that's where it comes from. All right, so now we're going to go through and actually do the same thing now with this. Use trapezoid rule with n equals 4 n equals 6 approximate from 0 to pi sine of x dx round to three decimal places. Okay, so I know sine is a wave, isn't it? Okay, so now let's first figure out my delta x. How would I figure out the delta x? B minus a. Mm -hmm. So B is pi, A is 0, divide that by 4. Where do you get the 4? Is that negative 4 or equals 4? Yeah, equals 4, sorry. All right, so I'm going to end up with pi over 4. So this is my delta x, that's a change in x. So that's going to be the width of each one of these, right? All right, so like we did for those last ones on the Riemann sum, I like actually writing out my intervals so I don't screw it up. So I know my first interval is going to start at 0, and it goes to pi over 4. There we go, pi over 4. All right, what's my next one going to be? Pi over 4. Pi over 4. There we go. Next one. Pi over 4. There we go. 3 pi over 4. And my last one? To what? Pi. Remember, we're only going to pi here. Yep. Okay, so that's good. So let's go ahead and uh, let's set it up. We know what delta x is, right? So the area under this, the area, so it's going to be A, is equal to, let's start off with 1 half, very good, pi over 4, close, and now I, I like changing to a bracket here because there's going to be a bunch of parentheses anyway. So I... I All right, so what did I say goes next? After regrouping, what, what do we have? The bases. Yeah, zero, 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 zero. 
Yep, f of 0. And in this case, it's going to be? 3 pi 4. What? Whoa. Uh, let's, let's go back. Last one, right? The first one and the? Last one. Okay, so in this case, my first one's going to be? F of zero. F of zero. Mm -hmm. What's my last one? F of three pi. No, it's just three pi. pi. But are F, we just F of pi. We're going to the end. Three. Are we just doing the left side? No, we're doing all of it. We're doing all of it? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because if you notice, that's why I write it out like this. I have pi over four twice, right? Yeah. I have pi over two twice. I have three pi over four twice. But I only have pi once, and I have zero once. Okay. So I'm gonna write. Now, what goes next? Very good. Plus 2. Now we go back through and all the ones that there's two of, right? So I'm going to have? Yep. What's next? Yep. pretty there. All right, so let's go and do this. We're going to calculate this because it says approximate to three decimal points. So that usually means plugging the calculator. But I like math. I really do. So <laughs> let, let's, let's, let's actually use some real tricks. So Okay, so now let's take a look. The left side, what am I going to come out? Well, right here. Say it. Pi over 8. Pi over 8, very good. All right, let's go with it. All right, so now f of 0. Yeah, right? So my function is sine of x, isn't it? My function is sine of x. Okay. Plus. Plus. Pi over 4 is? Root 2 over 2. Oh, yeah, that's what I just Yes, root 2 over 2. <laughs> Plus. One. Right? Yeah, Which is? Yep. The circle of life. Tell me why I it makes you wonder. All right, go ahead. Put them together. Remember Stacy used to sing that? No. No one remembers that. <laughs> no. Anyway. All right, come on, math this. Math it now. Now, math it. Hey, hey, math it. Come on, come on. You can do it. I'd be better off throwing dice to get an answer on this one. Wait a second. 
there's a two in front of it, so it's. <laughs> Y'all got some paper, come on now. <laughs> What's half a pizza plus half a pizza? A whole pizza. A whole pizza. So, red two over two. Okay, that's half of red two, right? Plus another red two over two. There we go. So we got half a red two plus another half a red two. So I get <laughs> what? one what? Pizza. Pizza. Yeah. Okay. Say red two. Red two. There you go. All right. So we got red two now, right? So we should have one plus red two right there, right? Yes. Okay. Now we do what? Two. Multiply by two. So two times one is? Two. Two times red two is? Two red two. One half? Two red two. Two red two. Yes. Okay. So two red two. Okay, so order, order of operation. I'm on the inside, work my way out. So now we have two plus two red two plus zero. Yeah, then plus zero. Yeah, there it is again, right? Multiply by pi over eight. Okay, so now. So remember, we still have a two. So we're distributing the pi over eight times two. Which gives you? Two pi over eight. Which is? Pi over four. Pi over four. Whoa. No. Plus. Oh, that comes out. Plus. What we have? Pi rad two over four. Okay. So we have pi rad two over four. Pi rad two pi. I don't know how I do that. Good job. <laughs> uh, you got to fill up water. Oh. All right, so. Okay, because there is a radical there, I really can't combine them anyway. So all I know is that my answer is going to be more than pi over 2. Yeah, more than that. Anyway, so. And it says rounded three decimal points. So that means putting your calculator, right? Help yourself. Y'all better find a calculator real quick, because don't make me. One point eight nine six. All right. Let's go back to this. They say one point eight nine six as an answer. Now, remember, the calculator is your friend, not food. So how do we try and make this work easier for us? Oh shoot! I had it in degrees. Ooh. Just a sec. Let me yeah, it's fine. Be, because you plugged in pi over 4 plus pi rad 2 over 4, right? Yeah, that's fine. Either way, it's, it's going to work out. But when we actually do it in the graph, you'll, you'll see. All right, again, we're trying to make the calculator work for us. So what do you think would be the easiest thing to do if I have to have this repeated function over and over again? Yep, there we go. We got vars. So let's go ahead and do that. So I know I'm going to my graph. Look to make sure that it is in radian. Okay, so I'm going to hit sine x. Close, enter. Okay. So I know that my interval is supposed to be between zero, zero and pi, but for the sake of this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. You don't need to do it. I just wanna, I like doing this. So settings and go zero and go to pi. 
All right, okay, so all this right here, right? So what does it mean? What do we say it means if it's above the line? It's all positive, right? It's all positive. Okay, that's good. So let's go ahead. So it's in F1, so I'm going back out of here, right? So let's go ahead and do my math. So I'm going to start with my fraction, which was 1 half times my fraction again, which is pi over, what do we have? 4, pi over 4, very good. Now, let's go my parentheses. And what was my first two? Zero, no, 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 before the zero. It was f of, f of zero, there you go. So I'm gonna do f of zero close plus f of pi there you go close plus two okay then open parentheses right yep there you go f of what was it pi over four right And my last one, three pi over four. Uh. And that's it, right? You forgot the plus sign. I forgot a plus sign. You're right. Thank you very much. There you go. Now, it's a lot quicker doing this because a lot of times you're going to have some nasty values that you really do not want to try and find. Okay? We, this one was basic because it was unit circle. Okay? So, you know, it should be super easy. Sending some to Garrett. What's up? Oh, it's all right. Stick to soccer. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Someone, someone hit the bar. Sorry. Hit the crossbar. All right. Super easy now, right? So I would like you right now doing n equals six. You are calculating n equals 6. Wow. Okay. And why do you say I'm nasty? That's why I said pi over 6. Not the easiest one, right? You know, be glad it's still on the unit circle.
Yeah, just so you know, Higgin finished off that bottle. Like it was full when I handed it to him. Yeah, I think he like gave it to like every single student. Or he drank it all himself. 